Welcome to Vancouver Graveyard Part 3. In Parts 1 and 2, we visited the graves of famous heroes. Today, we're remembering the Rapscallions, the Troublemakers, the Rogues. They played movie villains, broke the rules in their sport, or did something controversial. These are the Notorious Ones. We're starting our tour with three graves in the green pastures of Mountain View Cemetery in Vancouver. The first stop is Joseph Henry Hall, better known by his nickname, Bad Joe. Bad Joe is on our tour today because he was a fearsome and violent hockey player. He racked up hundreds of penalty minutes. He was fined and suspended many times. On the ice, he was an unrepentant scofflaw. After winning the Stanley Cup three times, Bad Joe was in Seattle in 1919. His Montreal Canadiens were playing the final series against the Metropolitans. An influenza epidemic spread across North America. The series was cancelled. There would be no Stanley Cup presentation that year. Many of the players got very sick, especially Bad Joe. His widowed mother Emily, who was living on Broughton Street in Vancouver, rushed to Joe's hospital bed in Seattle, where he died. He was 37 years old. There was a huge funeral service here in Vancouver with all of hockey's elite in attendance and everyone said that Bad Joe, well, he wasn't so bad after all. Joe was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1961. Sports writers continue to be fascinated with Bad Joe Hall. Next is the impressive grave of politician Malcolm McLean. Born in Scotland, Malcolm was a real estate investor when he came here in 1886 and became Vancouver's first mayor. Malcolm won the election by 17 votes. Malcolm is on our tour today because his opponents unsuccessfully petitioned the province claiming that at least 100 of Malcolm's ballots were illegal. Years later, Malcolm's supporters admitted the fraud. Malcolm's record also includes restricting the property rights of Chinese residents. Malcolm is seen in this famous picture taken after the Great Fire of 1886. He's seated in the middle and turned to the side. Despite controversial political records, he is credited with establishing early infrastructure. Malcolm McLean died in 1895 at age 50. Our last stop at Mountain View is Danny Teese. Danny is on our tour because he was associated with a violent group of young troublemakers called the Clark Park Gang. The nocturnal gang roamed the streets and alleys of East Vancouver in the 1970s, and their mythical status continues to fascinate locals. On November 28, 1972, Danny and a few other gang members were nearby their home turf, Clark Park, in an alley off Sophia Street. They were picking up a stolen car when they had an altercation with police. Danny was shot and killed by a constable right here. At a subsequent coroner's inquest, it was ruled an accident. Danny's story is featured in Aaron Chapman's phenomenal book, The Last Gang in Town. Danny's friends ensured that the cause of his death would not be forgotten. His memorial stone says, killed at age 17 by the Vancouver police. Friends say Danny Teese was a sweet lad with tremendous future potential. Next, we're visiting two graves at the Immaculate Ocean View Burial Park in Burnaby. First is Miles Mander, who was a famous movie star in early Hollywood. He is on our tour because he is best remembered for his portrayals of upper crust cads and oily villains. Miles was born into a wealthy English family and he developed an interest in writing and producing plays. He transitioned to the big screen and became a well-respected actor. He worked with Alfred Hitchcock and starred in Wuthering Heights with Laurence Olivier. Fans love his portrayal of villain Cardinal Richelieu in the 1939 musical The Three Musketeers. In 1940, he played drunken Roger Smythe in South of Suez. But together, somewhere else, not England, 
Somewhere else we can be together. All right, darling, I'll come. But not right away. You see, I'm about to sell this claim, and that'll take a few days. But you go back to your boat and wait for me in Cairo. I'll come the next one. Miles Mander died suddenly of a heart attack at the Brown Derby restaurant in Los Angeles in 1946. He was 57. I have no idea why he is interred here in Burnaby. If you know the answer to this mystery, please leave a comment below. Close by is the final resting place of politician Henry Stevens. Born in England, Henry came to Vancouver around 1901. He visited opium dens, sketchy saloons and illegal gambling halls each night, publishing his observations in the press the next day. His campaign forced the resignation of the police chief. Henry entered federal politics soon thereafter. He is on our tour today because he opposed Asian immigration. In 1914, he said, We cannot hope to preserve the national type if we allow Asiatics to enter Canada in any numbers. That year, he prevented South Asian passengers on the Komagatamaru steamship from entering Vancouver. Henry is seen here aboard the doomed vessel in the middle of the picture. This was the Henry Stevens building in Vancouver until 2019 when his name was removed following Prime Minister Trudeau's apology for the Komagatamaru incident. Henry, who had been an early supporter of the Stanley Park Seawall Project since around 1914, tapped in the final stone in a ceremony in 1971 when he was 92 years old. Henry Stevens passed away two years later in Vancouver. The first of three new Westminster stops today is the sacred St. Peter's Roman Catholic Cemetery. We're visiting the unmarked grave of a legendary man named Slumac. Some say that this picture is Slumac, while others say no. Only one of many mysteries associated with the man. Slumac is on our tour today because in 1890 he was arrested for killing a rival named Louis B. on the west shore of Pitt River. Slumac was sentenced to hang at the jail which was located here in what is now Simcoe Park. Many people had sympathy for the elderly indigenous Slumac, but he didn't receive any clemency. According to legend, Slumac revealed that he had discovered rich deposits of gold somewhere around Pitt Lake and his secret location went with him to the gallows. Moments before his 1891 hanging, Slumac was baptized and named Peter, hence his interment here. The legend of Slumac's gold continues to capture the imagination of countless fans. Some are still looking for his elusive cache of hidden gold. Our second new Westminster destination is the idyllic Sherisetic Cemetery. Born in Vancouver, Paul Snyder was an ambitious entrepreneur and savvy promotion specialist. He would later create the entertainment group Chippendales. In 1977, there was a Dairy Queen here on Vancouver's Hastings Street where he met employee Dorothy Stratton. They became a couple and Paul encouraged Dorothy to submit her pictures to Playboy magazine. They married in 1979 and Dorothy skyrocketed to international modeling success and movie stardom. Paul is on our tour today because on August 14, 1980, Los Angeles police found Paul and Dorothy's bodies in a house they had shared. Authorities determined that Dorothy was the victim of a murder-suicide. Paul was 29 years old. Paul Snyder has been portrayed by different actors, most famously by Eric Roberts in the movie Star 80. Dorothy Stratton had her picture taken with the statue of our next subject. And his grave is in New Westminster's historic Fraser Cemetery. John Dayton, who is better known by his nickname Gassy Jack, was born in England. Gassy sailed to North America during the gold rush. He piloted steamships on the Fraser River for several years and then became a saloon owner. His loquacious hospitality resulted in his famous nickname. Gassy refreshed thirsty customers at his Globe Saloon near Maple Tree Square. 
The neighborhood is now called Gastown in his honor. Since 1971, a statue of Gassy here has been a popular photo destination for tourists. Here is Wayne Liedenfrost's famous picture of Dorothy Stratton on the statue a few months before she was killed. Gassy is on our tour today because there is currently a petition to remove Gassy's statue. Local history indicates that Gassy married a 12-year-old indigenous girl who later ran away from him. According to legend, Gassy's dog howled on a dark night in May 1875. Gassy said, there's something going to happen. And then Gassy Jack passed away. He was 44 years old. Our last grave is perhaps the most famous in Metro Vancouver. This is the final resting place of Hollywood superstar Raymond Burr. Raymond was born here in New Westminster. He is best remembered for two iconic TV series from the 1950s to the 70s in which he played detective Robert T. Ironside and the masterful criminal defense lawyer Perry Mason. Raymond is on our tour today because of his incredible performances as scoundrels in the movies. Bad Guy Burr thrilled audiences with his naughty roles in the 1940s and 50s film noir. In 1954, he played killer Lars Thorwald in Alfred Hitchcock's blockbuster, Rear Window. What do you want from me? Your friend, the girl, could have turned me in. Why didn't she? What is it you want? A lot of money? I don't have any money. Locals here will never forget Raymond. He is memorialized with this lovely mosaic where his family once owned an office supply store. Raymond Burr passed away in 1993 at age 76. He is interred here with his family. And that concludes part three of our tour. Be sure to check out parts one and two. And in our next edition of Vancouver Graveyard, we'll be visiting the graves requested by you, the viewers. So if there is a particular grave you'd like to see, please add a comment below. Hope you enjoyed this little taste of old Vancouver as she once was. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Until next time, as my late grandpa used to say, be good to the other.